Hi, today we are going to speak about immunity. Now let's understand what does immune system mean. So when you go to any foreign country, we all have gone through airports, right? When we are going to any foreign country, we need a stamp of immigration. That stamp of immigration, when a virus or a pathogen or a microbe enters our body, that stamp of immigration is your immune system. So imagine a virus, a microbe, a pathogen, a bacteria, a yeast or fungi wants to enter into our system, either through our airways, our nasal passages, through our mouth or whatever, or the skin or through whichever means. They need clearance from immigration. And what are the defenses? mechanisms that provide that immigration check one it is your skin your skin has friendly bacteria your skin has a fat layer your skin has acid now this pathogen entering through your skin has to pass through these layers secondly if it is passing through your airways or it is passing through your nose and it is entering inside there is a mucus lining now this mucus lining actually traps it, engulfs it and eats it up. That is another defense mechanism. Another defense mechanism is your inflammation. So when you see that you've hurt on a particular place or there is an open cut or a wound, you will see that there is redness, there is swelling and there is an inflammation created at that particular spot. This is to protect and not let that pathogen move all around your body. Another way in which your body has a defense mechanism uh, for ensuring immunity is your gut flora. So we've heard about our gut bacteria, we've heard about intestinal flora, we've heard about our gut flora. What do they do? They also act as immune systems. They help in immunity. They also have good bacteria that take care and ensure that there isn't enough space left for the pathogens. They also ensure that there isn't enough bad food left for the bad bacteria or the pathogens to grow inside your body. This gut flora is also important to absorb nutrients and also recycles bile for you. Another way in which our defense mechanism works is your is your WBCs that you know do phagocytosis. So when there is uh, enough of vitamin C into your body, it increases acid levels. This acid levels ensures that phagocytes, which are a form of WBCs, are able to engulf and eat up or kill the microbes for us. Now this phagocytosis as a process is strengthened by the presence of acid into your body, which will come from vitamin C and it will come from apple cider vinegar half an hour before your meals. In addition to this, what happens is that these WBCs, what do they do in your body? So they, they release certain poison which kills the microbes. They release certain chemicals that, uh, that dissolves these microbes. They release free radicals and they create H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. Now if you have a cut or an open wound, the hydrogen peroxide, what it does is that it dissolves, creates bubbles and in that environment kills the microbes for you. So that is what uh, hydrogen peroxide does by the process of oxidation into your body. In addition to this, our WBCs are also responsible for making enzymes. So these enzymes are responsible for cutting down or breaking down these microbes so as to enable you know getting rid of them from our body in addition to this we also have mucus lining which traps these pathogens and ensures that they are killed on the spot have you ever seen that you know especially our immune system builds over time so we have two types of immunity one is innate immunity and one is acquired immunity Innate immunity is what comes to us by birth, but acquired immunity is what we acquire over a period of time. When we get exposed to certain pathogens, to certain viruses, to certain bacteria or certain macro microbes, they enter into your body, your immunity fights with them and creates memory. 
Now this memory is what helps us the next time the virus enters into your body our memory is triggered and our cells know exactly what to do and how to get rid of this virus. So yes our cells have memory that's how our immune system develops itself over time and we also need to make sure that small children who are need to acquire that immunity at a young age are given the right environment for it it's okay to allow your small children play in the mud it will build immunity we've seen a lot of mothers who do not want to let their children go out and play in the mud with the fear of catching diseases but let's understand that it will help your child in acquiring immunity for larger diseases when they arrive i have seen a lot of mothers that each time the child is stepping out to play they will want to sterilize the child's hand with a lot of sanitizer they will want to put a lot of these mosquito repellent creams all over their body so as to ensure that mosquitoes don't beat my child every time you're going out in the sun you will want to put a lot of sunscreen on that small child's face hands feet etc Now what is happening by the process of this is that you are not allowing that little child to get exposed to the virus and hence the acquired immunity is not building at the right time and when there is a situation when the virus attacks at a later point in time the child does not have enough acquired immunity to fight against it and hence in this fight of you know good cells versus bad cells it is these pathogens and the microbes that take over and hence it's advisable not to keep your children in a very very protected and sterile environment allow them to be uh, exposed to a little bit of dust a little bit of mud a little bit of natural environment because that is going to create the natural immunity the acquired immunity for your child now what also happens is that if these cells uh, if these uh, pathogens enter into our body imagine a situation where there is a war there is a fight of good soldiers versus bad soldiers so the good soldiers sometimes win it is the bad soldiers which sometimes win now if you want a situation that wherein only the good soldiers should win at all times then acquired immunity needs to build at a younger age but at some times when the good soldiers are not winning and the bad soldiers are taking over the uh, these are in leading the good soldiers what happens is that our immunity is fairly intelligent and our wbcs know exactly when to go through the process of apoptosis now what happens in this process is that these cells in a very heroic manner say that i don't want the entire body to suffer so i will die so that these microbes don't take over the entire body how does this happen when these microbes or these pathogens enter the cells the virus can do nothing as long as it is outside into your body it cannot do anything unless it enters the cell membranes and reaches inside the cell because in an outside environment virus cannot live it starts living and starts replicating and multiplying itself only when it enters your cell membrane so if your cell um, if if this virus is able or the pathogen is able to enter inside your cells it will bleach your dna and it will create rna it will start multiplying and growing and when this process of multiplying and growing it will spread all across the body and will hamper the entire body now these wbcs which are heroic and understand that you know they have invaded over us i need to protect the body it's like saying a freedom fighter says i will you know sacrifice myself for the sake of the entire country similarly these wbcs choose to sacrifice themselves for the sake of the entire body and that process is called apoptosis so they do not allow the cell they do not allow the pathogens to enter your uh, you know the enter inside the cells because if they enter inside the cells they will alter the dna they will replicate they will grow they will mimic your body tissue if they are able to mimic your body tissues our immune system is not able to recognize which are these foreign invaders because of which our immune system gets confused and starts attacking attacking our own cells now this process of attacking our own cells by a confused immunity is called uh, autoimmune diseases 
and a lot of autoimmune diseases like um, it could be an asthma or it could be arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis and a variety of other hypothyroidism etc, Hashimoto's etc are possible because of this confused immunity state because the virus has been able or the pathogen has been able to alter our DNA and create replicates, you know, make RNAs and multiply itself. So we do not want that condition to happen. Uh, if they are able to do that, they will start replicating or mimicking our body tissues because of which our immune cells will start, you know, attacking their own cells, which leads to an autoimmune condition. It will also, uh, this particular pathogen is fairly intelligent. It starts hiding into our calcium. So if it starts hiding into our, into our calcium, it will move from one joint to another to another and it will move within the synovial fluid. So this is one joint, this is another joint, they join together to create create strong uh, uh, you know joints for us and in between these there is a synovial fluid that exists and in these pathogens know exactly where to hide so they hide in calcium they hide in the synovial fluid and in turn a lot of our joint related problems also come into place so to avoid all of this what needs to be done there are two things that we can do we can either do things that strengthen our immunity and we can do things that can weaken our immunity so what are those things that weaken our immunity? Those things that weaken our immunity are essentially a, a poor diet, a lack of nutrition, it could be lack of minerals, lack of vitamins, it could be a, you know, a lack of sleep, it could be high levels of stress, it could be you know, lack of amino acids, a very low concentration of fatty acids into our body or it could be glucose related problems so you know binging too often eating too often increasing your blood sugars and so this this is something that will only weaken your immune system if you want to strengthen your immune system then you need a couple of things number one you will require vitamin C we spoke about this. Vitamin C has a huge role to play as far as our immune system is concerned. They will enable the phagocytosis process and hence will strengthen the immune system. Vitamin C will come from your sauerkrauts or it will come from leafy vegetable, leafy greens or it will come from citrus fruits etc. In addition to this we also need vitamin D. Now vitamin D is like the strongest possible thing that you need to build a strong immune system into your body. What these pathogens do is that as soon as they take over our cells or they enter into the membranes of our cells they start blocking the vitamin D receptors. And when the vitamin D receptors are blocked, our immune system is practically paralyzed because that is the strongest link and the strongest force for our immunity. So vitamin D is exceptionally important also to increase the T cells into our body which will enable the immune system. In addition to this, we will also require vitamin A. Now this vitamin A is uh, coming from beta carotene, it will come from your carrots or your pumpkins or it will come from the sweet potatoes, it will come from butter or ghee or it will come from uh, you know a lot of these yellow fruits and vegetables like your pineapples etc or oranges for that matter. So this gives you a good amount of uh, vitamin A. After this you also will require we said we spoke about vitamin C, we spoke about vitamin D, we spoke about vitamin A, we require vitamin B1 and we will also require zinc. Now let's understand the you know that some people have a very heavy reliance on grains as a part of their diet so if you have a lot of grains that you consume in your breakfast and lunch and dinner with a very low concentration and low quantum of fruits and vegetables then in that case your zinc will go down so the higher amount of grains that you increase in your diet the lower the zinc comes down over a period of time so a balance is definitely required so that zinc is another thing that will help us uh, strengthen our immune system and apart from that we could uh, also consider uh, olive leaf or we could consider garlic. Garlic is anti-inflammatory, it is antimicrobial, it is antibacterial, it is antifungal, it has, it is a blood thinner and it has so many other advantages for the human body. So garlic is something that one must definitely include on one di one's diet as far as immunity is concerned. 
olive uh, leaf is also equally important now you know if if you just observe somebody who's lost a near and dear one this stress is called the bereavement stress and the bereavement stress usually is the most uh, tough you know stress that one goes through it increases cortisol levels uh, dramatically and because of this you know the immune system almost goes into a state of paralysis now what you require at that in uh, you know for an individual who's gone through bereavement stress because of loss of a near or dear one that individual needs to increase fat into his diet because what does fat do your cell membranes are made of fat okay so if if the virus has to enter inside your cell and you know kind of create havoc to your dna and replicate and mimic your body tissues and create an autoimmune condition and block your vitamin d receptors it has to enter inside your cell membrane and that entry requires entry through this fat layer this weaker the membrane is the weaker the fat layer is easier it is for the virus to enter inside so if an individual is sick or is un well it is important that the person does not have a low concentration of fat into your diet this fat can be healthy fat it can come through ghee which is your desi cow's butter or it can be through coconut a great source you could use coconut oil for your food preparations or even just eating coconut is an excellent source of uh, you know the essential fat into your body you could also uh, you know add up on essential fatty acids like omega 3 fatty acids flax seeds pumpkin seeds etc so seeds and nuts and coconut and butter the desi cow ghee's butter is an excellent source of fat which will strengthen the walls of your cells and make sure that the entry for pathogens to enter your cells and create a havoc condition into your body will be minimized in addition to this one may also consider um fasting so we often feel that fasting is only for religious purposes but that's not the case so fasting is also required by the body to go into a state of relaxation give digestion a little bit of a break and concentrate on detoxification remember your body can either do digestion or detoxification at a time it cannot do both simultaneously that's the reason why when you sleep in the night when you go into a deep sleep your body goes through a detoxification process so the more time that you give your body for detoxification by giving rest to your digestion system that is what will help you tremendously and once in a month or maybe once in 15 days if you try fasting it's it's not a bad idea at all your body will be very thankful to you in addition to this you definitely want to increase your gut microbiome and increase the strength of your intestinal flora your gut flora your gut bacteria and what they require from you is prebiotics probiotics fiber and fermented food so fermented food could be your sauerkraut or you know you could just have your idlis or dosas which are also fermented food so the more of fermented food that you have even even your uh, garlic and honey you know fermented over a period of time or your pickles the achars that you have in mostly in indian diets are excellent to make sure that you have the right gut flora to enable and help you from a lot of immune diseases i hope this is useful see you again in another video namaste